what a great opportunity to be with this legend of our time. Again, mommy, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you again. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Pastor. Okay. Well done. Well, mommy, this time around, we want you to um, speak to Pastor's wife. And it looks like Pastor's wife have unique challenges or unique situations that they, they deal with. And I think what we are going to also uh, do it this way. We are going to gain from your life and then Pastor, I mean, Reverend Funke Felix Adiju, known everywhere. Who are you? Uh, I'm a child of God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a child of God. That's my greatest qualification. Greatest qualification. What, what's, what's the journey been like for you as a pastor's wife? Any regrets? <laughs> <laughs> Full of joy and privileges. It was very challenging. I used to like and love my very private life. Wow. Until I met Felix Adeja. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me that God called him. It was a dog of war. I said, oh, wait. No, no, no. We can do ministry. And then God gave me an encounter. And I'm glad I did. You see, lives that have been changed. Hmm. Nothing compares to it. When you meet people at the airport in foreign lands, excuse me, I gave my life to Jesus. Why are you wife preaching? Oh! Then you know it's, it's, it's a public life. Mm. It's the life of public someone life. that lives in a glass house. Mm. You don't have your, a life of your own, you're a prisoner of the gospel. <laughs> mm, you'll be misjudged, you'll be misinterpreted, you'll be mis... mis whatever, anything else. Well, mommy, can you, can you talk to Pastor wife who... Um, let's, let's start with those who are just coming into the church. From your experience, what will you say to the Pastor's wife who is just beginning? And particularly some are beginning and sometimes there is no food. Sometimes they have little resources to go. And here you are. Um, God has blessed you relatively. Has it always been like this? And if not, what would be your um, counsel for Pastor Swag when this coming? Well, um, I didn't marry my husband as a pastor. We were married before. He told me about the call. So we started from the scratch. The ministry actually started from our living room wow. with two converts his mechanic and one teacher in our children's school. And I think we were like 12, 13. So as people leave, we will be rolling on the floor. Hey, God, wow. we had 13 people, Jehovah. Meanwhile, I was trading. Selling eggs, curry, palm oil, yam, plantain. So I would take a little, put in bags. We used to, my husband used to drive a pickup. We had a box wagon and the, the pickup was this. So I would sit at the back of the pickup that had no seats. Or sit on the tire. Remember this particular couple? We must always go drop them off. Yes, in our Korean. Ministry of our Greek, the school of our Greek yes. is quite a distance. So after the parish, that they will come again. So now I will have packed this food, give to people, you know, yeah. everyone. Just come back to next Wednesday, come back to fellowship, or please come back. Then the couple and their children will sit in the front with my husband and we sit at the back, holding their food. So when we get there, now come down, give it to them. I hope you were blessed. Please come back. Come back again. The only way to go and bring them. Bring them. Sometimes I will be depressed and downcast, and I will say to myself, "Are you sure God called you?" <laughs> Starting people that are for you. Sure that you. Let's well, let's go and join assemblies of God or church of God. Those two are always mentioned. Any day I was down, he would be very up to call, called me down. Called me, ah God, I will share his experiences again. Any time he was there, I would be up. Remember what God said. That's how I hear. So, 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 which means you mean there were times that you fell down oh. in the early days? And I still do. Wow. I still do. Maybe somebody is watching us, a pastor's wife is watching us. I still do. probably 
It's part of the package. Oh. To show that God is God. I say cry. Oh. Mothers, I'm still wondering. Nestle, well, is it really worth it? And then I say, Holy Spirit, forgive me, forgive me. It's <laughs> worth it, it's worth it. You know, and all that. So the year after we started, um, we came to Akure not because of ministry, but as of transfer. Mm. We live in Badon, had our two kids there. So it was on 400 naira. I was working on 150 naira. Mm. So there's no kind of jollof rice I can do, mm. as I speak to you now, because we didn't have enough. So I had to manage and manage, put locust beans, you know, and all that. Then my husband told me that he would not touch three things the gold, the girls, and the glory. So from the beginning, he said we were not going to touch the offering. So we put ourselves into it. We go to Iduani. The man, there's a man in our church now. He's one of the instrumentalists. He beats Shekere. He, he was the vice chairman of the local government at that time. So I used to buy Gary from him. Um, drive to Iduani in that box. Why did buy Gary on the way? Buy plantain. Buy yam. Uh, I, I had a shop, but I had two. Now, and they are still there. Wow. As a pastor's wife. Wow. Beginning. Wow. So, we wow. buy, and then we sell. I go to work, then the back, my husband, sell kerosene, sell this. That's how we started. Wow. And our children started little by little, and God began to, to bless us. Like someone said, in 18 years, Agape was the best thing that ever happened to the state. God just. God just, it just skyrocketed. We can't explain it. God just did some amazing things. Mm. Yeah. There are three kinds of women in ministry. Mm. Number one, you have called women that are married to called men. Number two, mm. you have called women that are married to chosen men. Number three, you have chosen women that are married to called men. And I want to start from the last. Chosen women that are married to called men. It is the man that is called, like Kenneth Hagen. <laughs> the wife is chosen to be his wife. Oh. I think um, Oretta Hagen wrote, at least I read one book, you know, oh. that she wrote, but you know how many books Kenneth yes. Hagen wrote? Whoever heard of Oretta Hagen? But that woman was a colossal success. Oh. There was a day I saw a magazine dedicated to her. One of it, man, said, I put that magazine on my head and I was praying because her fourth generation was preaching. Mm. He said, God, this woman lived. She was a chosen woman married to a called man. The man was the one that had the calling mm. and she understood it. But she stood wow. in her place and wow. fulfilled it. Number two, we have called women that are married to chosen men. Mm. An example is Joyce Mayer. Most people don't even know Dave Mayer. I'm sure if Dave Mayer were to be an African in Nigeria, they would just get <laughs> God to call him. You must be stupid. You must be silly. Yeah. Your wife don't use your head to, to chop. How can she have a minister and you won't have? Become <laughs> apostle, archbishop. They would have given him titles. Mm, and that would have created a problem. But you see, that man is Joyce's strength. Mm. He's a chosen man. That is married to a called woman. Just be is one of the greatest blessings and gifts of God among women today. So we have that. And then number three, we have called women that are married to called men. An example is Gloria and Kenneth Copeland. You don't even know who to listen to. You don't yeah. even know whose material yeah. to read. Both of them are so. Mm. So as a woman, just understand whether you are the called. Or you are the chosen. Yeah. None is inferior to the other. Wow. And you can start as a chosen and end up as a God. So, mommy, how does a woman know the difference? Can you ever get the difference? Because sometimes um, um, there's a pressure that once a person is a pastor's wife, she must, she's already called. <laughs> You know, that's uh, why the error is. Right. We need to know. That's where the error is. You can be a pastor's wife, chosen to be a pastor's wife. You don't have to be a pastor. I am not a pastor. Mm. I keep telling you, God did not call me to be a pastor. 
If I start a church, it will not, it will, it will scatter. I don't have the patience. Mm. My husband can sit down with you for six hours, listen to you. I can't. Mm. And I'm not inferior to him. I will tell you next point, please. Because there are other people waiting. I'm mm. choleric. My husband is phlegmatic. You have to understand who you are. I'm a mm. teacher. Found something. Give it to me. I will help you grow it. I will help you. I'm an administrator. I can plan till tomorrow. I am the one that plans celebrations in our house. And nothing will be missing. I know how to get the best planner. I know how to get this. That's not my husband's area. So the fact that you are the pastor's wife does not mean you are called into the pulpit ministry. So as a woman, you need to find out what is your purpose. I didn't start as a called woman. I just stood by my husband. I didn't want to understand what is ministry. Yes, as I chose it, you understand which one is ministry, which one is, uh, let me just have God. I'm just going to just sweep. And I still sweep up to that. That's my area. Wow. They do. Put things in place. It's the altar for them. What about the choir? And, uh, that's me. That's my strength. I'm an organizer. Mm. So, and then eventually God said to me, You've been faithful in another man's home. I'm giving you your. I didn't understand it. Mm. My husband would teach me how to preach. Write it down, points, five points. In fact, one of my books, one of my 101 books, it was my husband that gave me the materials. Right. Then, when he's speaking, I'll be writing. Inspiration. Then, and as I stood beside him, I was listening to him, drinking from him, I, I got to develop my gifts. Right. And today, by God's grace, at least I can stand in a little way. Right. So, the fact that you're a pastor's wife does not mean you are called to right. what you can be in the calling of your husband. At the same time, you can also have a calling. You stand by him and then you do some other things outside. So we need to get it in the church. You know, you have some pastors wife that the church has started before they married a pastor. Some, they started the church together. Uh, some, they are under a ministry. The woman comes to join her, join him. And sometimes they inherit the church, uh, or they, they are transferred to the church, and then they come in the pastor company, and then the pastor's wife is a uh, stamp. We are still going to come to the issue of Geo's wife and pastor, but I, I'm just looking at how does a, a pastor's wife find his a place in the scheme of things? What are you gifted for? Hmm. As a pastor's wife, you can be a children's evangelist. You mm. just love to be with children. Use your gifts. When you are done, sit beside your husband. If when you hold the microphone, you scatter things, then you, you are not called to, to hold the microphone. Mm. Are you called into intercession? Mm. In fact, that was where I started. Wow. Intercession wow. and sweeping. That's my idea. <laughs> never been to go and uh, sweep sweeping can be a ministry. Ah, it is my own ministry. <laughs> <laughs> it is my ministry. Ah, only ballet to last in the church, you know, because I like things to be neat. The, the house of the Lord, my house. Ah. When I'm in church, even as I'm worshiping God, I see one thread on the floor. Our shards have no need. Mm, I pick it. So, what are you gifted for? What do you like to do? Then, what do you hate? I can't stand same people who oppress women. So that's part of my calling. I will fight with you if I see you do any bad thing to a woman. I can't explain it, but that's my calling. Some people don't even bother them. So what, what do you like? What do you hate? First, settle that with yourself. You don't need to be struggling. I want to be the women something. I want to be this. I want to be that. No, who are you? Once that is settled, you and your husband sit down. What area do you does he want you to be involved in? Is it the women something? Okay. Men need only one touch. A woman needs two touches. So, you know, you handle that. Or is it the children? Or is it whatever? A lot of people are in wrong offices, carrying titles wow. Wow. without the grace. Mm. A caller does not connote a calling. 
So you need to understand that one. It's very, very important. And then once you understand that, then start. And when you don't have the strength, bring it people, delegates. Mm. That's God taught me early. Nobody is the Almighty. Only yeah. the Almighty is the Almighty God. You don't know things, you don't know everything. So bring people, you you can be in charge of this, that, you can be that. Then you can you can be the director or the chairman mm. as a pastor's wife. Put this together. Oh, let's do our conference. Oh, let's do our whatever. The fact that you are married to the man gives you it honor. That one is said to they will call you mommy or call you whatever they call you in the church. So and then depend on people's strength. Pray about it. And as you grow, other things you begin to come up. You can write, do that. You want to be on TV, you want to be on stuff like that. But please grow into it. That is how it can last. Mm. And it. Mm. Don't receive it as a gift. Mm. So it can last. Okay, mommy, that would make me to say this. Uh, well, okay, we'll, we'll come back to that because as soon as you are talking about growing into it, I wanted to ask about phases of, you, of growth which you have experienced. But let's keep that till later. Let's look at it from this angle. The wives of Jews have different challenges compared to the wife of pastors on. Can you let us into some of the challenges of the wife of Jews and wisdom of how to handle it? Um, and part of the things I want you to help us consider, because there is a Jew's wife that probably might be watching us, is the fact that there will be pressure from the wife of pastors on that. There will be lapses of the Jew that people expect Mommy Jew to do. There will be general um, expectations of pastors. There will be general expectations of. So, how does. How do you see, help us first see the Jew's wife and then the pastors on that's wife? And then how, because also, maybe we should first deal with Jill's wife. Then we'll come to the pastor's on Let's first deal with Thank you very much. I think the best example we have is mommy, pastor, Mrs. Holy, and the body. Mm. That woman has stood in her place of calling. Mm. And generations and generations will continually rise to come and bless it. Uh, I have been privileged to meet with her, to relate to her. I have not met a woman that that blessed to fit into the office of a Jew's wife. Ah, that woman is, is, is a calling. It's a calling. And she manages it so well. So we give it to her. Me, I'm a small Jew's wife compared to people like that. We can be talking about my daughter and her because she's now more than a Jew's wife. Mm. She's now a Jew herself. So that's why I didn't even mention yeah. her. And there are other ones I know that will be doing excellently well that I don't have a relationship with. But Mommy Jo, Mommy Adiba is, they just crossed my mind. There is a grace that a Jew or a founder has that a pastor does not have. There's a passage when the children of Israel went to a battle. I think it was. Ahab and Jews suffer. And the Syrians were instructed, touch neither the small nor the mm. great, save the king of Israel. Mm. Mm. There are battles that are designed to finish the Jews that will not even touch the pastor. Mm. There are many things that a founder faces mm. that pastors don't face. Mm. Everything stops honesty. Mm. So, spiritually speaking, graces are different. Mm. Apart from that, there are things that the Jew is responsible for. Mm. I remember when the ministry was young, sometimes I would not be able to sleep at night. Mm. <sighs> and I would look at my husband, he's fast asleep. <laughs> Tell him you are sleeping. Say, oh, you are not sleeping. I said, sound like this. <laughs> he said, for the last time I checked, I'm sitting Jew. <laughs> <laughs> then he says to me, the person that paid the salaries last year, mm. or last month, he's still, he's still alive now. Sleep, you're not in my head. 
I will try. And it's almost over. And I will be paid. So, a pastor is not looking for staff salaries. He's the Jew. Oh. The pastor that is a branch pastor is not inferior to the Jew. No. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about responsibilities. Yeah. He's not looking for the Lord. what did God say for this year? What is God saying? He's the man of God, the Jew that would, you know, declare that. When they are, when they say, ah, somebody said, or somebody said, you know, most of the time, oh, that's it, oh, that's it. Say, let them send and catch you. Hey, send that, send that, you know. So it's a thought. In fact, mm. what, what the Yoruba is called is Shere mm. mm. He carries loads that sometimes he can't even express it. He just see it on the set. Recently, I was watching some of our fathers and the faith and said, Yeah, the loads these people are carrying. Mm. Oh God, I'm not a Jew. You know, that kind of a thing. <laughs> so, the same thing with a Jew's wife. Mm. She shares in that responsibility, she shares in that grace. Many people look up to her. She has her family to take care of. She has her personal life to take care of. She still has to minister to these ladies that are married to the branch pastors. She has to give them direction. Mm. They have to, you know, put conferences together. She has her own siblings. She has her own in-laws. Mm. So it's a lot. And that's why it's important mm. for us to always lift them up yeah. in, in yeah. prayers. So, and the Jew, Everybody looks up to him. He too needs someone to look up to. He needs a mentor. So sometimes he needs to go out of his ministry to go get help. Oh. Many times. Because they look up to him. They think, ah, he has everything. He can't even share his pains. When he has a challenge with his wife, he can't tell him, are you pray for us? You know, when he has needs, he can't. So it's a lot and it's different. The, the load is heavier on the geo, but the grace is more. Well, mommy, how do you advise Jill's wife from the standpoint of experience to be able to carry the load? Well, look at all those responsibilities you just described. And a woman will have to stand by her husband to carry all this load. What are your advice from experience? Please don't joke with your relationship with the Lord. Is the body bearer. That is my secret. Mm. Hmm. Relationship with the Lord. You know why you cannot pray? Lie on the bed there and they cry. Or be praying in tongues. That is, in fact, if there's one advice I can give to you, it is that one. Mm. Hmm. Make sure you and God are like this. Whether you feel like praying, or you don't feel like praying, just make sure. Then, number two, please, I beg of you, don't be a lone ranger. Mm. Seek for help. Sometimes I just sneak to a place where, although sometimes they still find me out, I just sit in one place in, in a conference just to hear other people speak. You know, not somebody that knows from Kepha is a you know. I just sneak in just to be ministered to. You need it. Because you give and give and give and give. And you can suffer from burnout. You can even move into depression. It is the curse. It's a book that is titled Depression, the Curse of Achievers. Depression is not a problem for people that does what are they? A drunk. <laughs> it is people that have achieved. People that have responsibilities. People say, look at my life. How do I go to good? No. So sometimes they go to depression. So please don't be a lone ranger. You must have someone you look up to, someone you can drink from, whether they are tapes or they are books or one on one. You know, people you sow into their lives, people that bless you. I have oh, let you every month I serve seed, I send my seed. That I always listen to their prayers or the texts, just one statement. I hear, ah, my month is best because. Mm, Ministry can sometimes be a battlefield. Wow. My husband says some people are not happy that you are happy. That's mm. why even the Jews why it's making some people to be. When the ministry was less than one year, one woman abused me. She said it in the presence of someone that she knew would tell me. She said that I was very ugly <laughs> and that I don't fit my husband. You? Ah, just... I know poverty can make you. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, 
that day, uh, that they didn't meet me well at all. You know, they are looking for baby mail, they are looking for how to pay your children's school fees, they are looking for how to minister to your husband, they are looking for even you, and then somebody is abusing you. Sometimes you just say, Ah, oh God, just give me one opportunity to reply to this person. <laughs> so I replied to I said, Tell her that I may not be fine, but I know the person where I find pass. That was, I was trying to abuse her. <laughs> Fast forward. Some years after, maybe like 10 years, somebody said to somebody that, ah, this so much must be bleaching. So I carried my microphone one day I was preaching. I said, I heard that. So people said, I'm, I'm bleaching. I said, eh, hey, I'm not bleaching. When you first knew me, it was poverty that discolored me. I said, my true color is now showing. <laughs> Please, like you can't say, I can't be the <laughs> But you see, hey, ministry. Yeah. You see, all sorts, all sorts. Yeah. So please make sure you are not alone. Mm. Then choose to be happy. One woman I heard very popular that her husband impregnated somebody. And somebody came to tell her. The person said, Do you know that I was a so so place and I had and I had that. Where she sat was where she got, she traveled to heaven from. Wow. That's what a heartbreak can do. Wow. Just sat like this. She couldn't talk. She couldn't. She couldn't. She could not. Eventually, she died after a few days. So, me, I play Ludo. I play Ayo. I they, watch Africa Magic. Ah, I will open wine. I will eat popcorn. Oh, I thought you are always fast now. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat bolly. Bolly is my favorite. Hey, I enjoy my life. Oh, mm. I will laugh. I was in Houston late last year. And then my children were getting ready. I said, Where are you going? They said, Ah, mommy, I live by the town. I said, That's where to. I went to my room and changed to my jeans. <laughs> I said, she had a ticket. I said, Mommy, I said, and Lauren. <laughs> I followed them. I think my boss spotted me. Ah, you tell me, Mama, did you want the jokes? I loved. You know, many people, ministry, ministry, they have pains. You are a man, then of God. You are a woman, then of God. So let the little boy in you come out once in a while. The little girl, love. You can't. Everything is not the book of Zephaniah, the book of Babako, the book of Zephaniah. So many pastors have died before their time. People just cry for three days or maximum 30 days according to the Bible. And after 30 days, they said, we have warned Moses enough. Joshua, take over. One month. The ministry will continue. So laugh. Enjoy yourself. And so... Um, Mommy, let's come to pastor's wife who are undying ministry. Um, oftentimes you have a challenge of pastor's wife undying ministry. It's fallen into two categories. There are some who it looks as they are the ones that create problems for their husband. Yeah. Because the part of them is competing with the Jew's wife. Yeah. There are some who feels, look, I'm not just interested in all of these things. And they probably are more distracted with other things because if you want, it's you that God called me. God didn't call me, send me to my own. But from your experience, I've murdered and uh, uh, um, you are still leading so many pastors' wives. I'm sure you must have encountered a lot on the counseling team. What would be your advice of the pastor's wife that is watching us here, who probably might be under a ministry, and then, you know, the different challenges. Some will even feel that they, they pick up, they have, they have, they are offended or they pick offense in one or two things that the leadership of the ministry that they are in does, and how do they handle? I mean, how do you advise them to handle things like that? Just speak to pastor's wife who are not necessary. Thank you. Let me mention one more thing to the Jews and the Jews wives. People will leave your ministry. People mm. are the most anointed in this world. Wow. Some that's, will leave. That's deep. Some will break your heart. Some will be disloyal. Some will be ungrateful. 
Don't kill yourself. Jesus had 12. One left. One was destroyer. So if you have 24, expect two. If you have 36, <laughs> expect three. You are even trying. So if the Almighty God could come down, he had a church, and people still, don't kill yourself. Bro. And there's no need to be carrying people's people and be cursing them or leaving your church. You will not prosper. Your first one will die. Ah! Oh, God. No. That is not it. When people leave our ministry, you go with your official account. We will pay you for the next six months. Yeah. Ask people that have left by God's grace. That's what we do. Because you said God called you. Tell me, prove. Yeah. And then if it's God, don't go. I don't want to be fighting against God. Not, we agreed on that. Yeah. People that have left. But in 35 years, by God's grace, sorry, 32 years, nobody has ever broken away. They carry people. Because we didn't break away. They yeah. break away church. We always suffer breaking ways like Papa, we did what we say. We didn't break it. So, mm. so Chio's wife, relax. Don't let anybody allow you to go to hell because of unforgiveness mm. and bitterness. Yeah. They will offend you. People you have labored with. Let's just leave that man. Those of you that have branch pastors that God has called, mm. I want you to understand that life is not governed by miracles. Life is governed by principles. Mm. Wow. If you don't sow it, wow. you will not reap it. Wow. And nobody's in the front by mistake. That mm. somebody is a Jew's wife. I wrote a book, I Am the Pastor's Wife. I love the last chapter. It's a four chapter book. Chapter one, Dear God. Chapter two, Dear Me. Chapter three, My Dear Husband. Chapter four, Dear Congregation Member. In that chapter four, I said, You may be more beautiful. God didn't pick you, He picked me. I am the pastor's wife. Your grammar may be better. God did not choose you, it's me He chose. If you like, for your own sake, you better love me and listen to me and be blessed by my life. What am I trying to say? The Jew's wife, God put her there. You are not the Jew's wife. And we can tell you, God can call you tomorrow. Whatever you sow now is waiting for you in the future. Please be a blessing, not a brat. Be a blessing to that Jew's wife. When she's counting her blessings, let her count you twice. Stop frustrating her. Women, women. The Jew's wife must not wear something you must wear. Mm. You must not detail her. You must choose to be yourself. Because some of these things come by grace and they are gifts mm. from the people whose lives God has used and unfair to bless. Mm. Stop instigating people. Some of you, God didn't call your husband. You were the one flat, telling God to flat. flash. No flashes. It is not right. It is the church. Nobody owns a church. Jesus owns oh. the church. So stop scattering it out, you know. And then there are some of you that the Jews or the Jews' wives are not treating well. They underpay your husbands. You have had to handle cases like that. Your children can't go to school because your husband has not put all his life into the ministry and they are just trying to balance it. Yeah. That's why I always encourage you, you to do something with your life. Do something mm. so that you can support your husband. Even if it is pure water, if it is Ankara, if yeah. it is something you are doing, so that your life will not be dependent on the church. Sometimes you don't know the reason why the geo is behaving like that. Maybe there are things you don't have any knowledge in, you know, about. Maybe there are some projects, maybe you don't know the dealings of God. Rather than cause problem and all that, do something that you can have money. There's nothing wrong with you going into real estate, nothing wrong with you, you know. So please do something with your life. Mm. If God has not called your husband, don't call him more. And if God has called your husband, don't don't break away, don't don't muddle up the water. That fed you, we are God used to raise you to expose you because you are now living. There was a time a lady and her husband left the ministry. The next time that lady lived in my house, we celebrated her wedding, bought the county, their birthday, and all that. When she became BG, also, I wonder, I just got a message abusing me. Jesus. I was looking for the person they were abusing. I said, Annie, please, this can't be me. Yeah, no, this can't be me. This person that I invested into her. It's part of the package. And you still want to go to heaven. You forgive him before the person repents. Wow. The person has, has begged me, you know, she doesn't even, I don't know what's left at my head. I know that. 
It's okay. Who knows? Maybe God was testing me to mm. see what is in my heart. So when they call you mama and they call you mommy, you think it's it's right to? Mm. It's what we have seen, what we've been through. I, I think, mommy, you might you might need to help up with this issue of offense mm -hmm. because a lot of pastors' wives, some Jews, some general pastors' wives, have had genuine reason to be angry over issues, and sometimes some of those pain get into the level of bitterness. Some will fall into depression because they can't get out of the shock of the pain. Either they offenses from their husband or those offenses from the church members or how do you encourage pastors why to handle offenses you are first a christian before you're a pastor's wife that is what helps me yeah. all of you met in this world one day you will stand as individuals before god and every man shall receive according to his work Everybody, you won't believe it. If my husband were to tell you his story. So, sometimes God will, is to train you mm. to see what is in your heart. People will, there are people will not offend you in ministry, forget you are in the wrong profession. Mm. People you have labored over. Ha! One, one person, many years ago, mm. the, the, the wife was going to have a baby. Whatever you think a baby can need, I supplied. What the mother could need, I supplied. After some time, what did you see? What did you do? You know how painful that can be? Because he was living. And when he was living, he said, My husband, when he left, my husband should have given him some chairs, given him some microphones. My mother said, I'm not the owner of the church. I'm living. You should set me up. He said, I'm not the owner. How can I be taking? If everybody is living and I'm taking 50 chairs, taking, you know. So what did you do? I burst into tears. Like, what? Wow. So you will have people that will offend you. Mm. Many things you will go through. <laughs> That's why they say um, experience is what we call rags. <laughs> you know, <laughs> same things. But mm. please protect your hands, no matter what. Do not allow for bitterness. It's not easy, oh. But do not allow for bitterness. Just trust God to help you. Mm. So that even when you have genuine reasons, yeah. you'll be bitter. Because God has paid days coming to pay those. Now, from what you are saying, now it looks as if ministry is in faces. Can we can we come to your experience and use it to learn for pastors' wife to learn how you move from area to state influence to regional influence to national influence to international influence. Are there specific things that happen at the gate point of this breaking into new race? And what would be your advice for pastor's wife? You know, either it's the pastor that wants to break into those new realms and the wife needs to support, or it's the pastor's wife that is breaking into that new realm of influence. What would be your advice? Because let's look at yourself. For example, you have operated in the two dimensions. Yourself, and that they had broken from area to state to national to international. Yourself as a person, uh, the, the minister that God has given to you, you've operated. So what, what are the things that you want to tell somebody coming behind to watch out for and then to? I cannot deceive you because no liar will go to heaven. Yes. My life is a definition of G-O-D, grace on duty. Mm. I cannot disagree. There are people that fast mm. 24 months, they have the mountain top. I don't know how to do it. I've never been to Rio. Okay, okay, it's good though. But the last year, we were in the village, and I said, they always talk about me, kill me, kill me. Oh, is it? I was asking my husband, is it the house or is it something? We are close to a day. Yeah. So, come and show me. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, ah, I'm going to. So there are people that God has called, they pray, mountain tops. So you can say, ah, it's because they go to mountains, mountain tops to pray. There are people, my life is a village girl. 
helped I'm telling you the the truth. I'm telling you the truth. In hindsight, I can now share. Okay, what what did you glean? Because I'm trying to put some things together for my sixth year. That would be great. But the lessons I've learned. What did I do? You know, and all that. Number one, I am a worshiper. Mm. You can go your long career. Possibility meeting the new alone. Toilet, kitchen, anywhere. I don't care who is watching and who is not watching. I don't care. And you know, for Samuel chapter 2, verse 36, they that honor me, I will honor. Mm. They that despise me, I will hold him light as sin. That's scripture rules my life. Mm. Every opportunity I can find to honor God. Mm. Whether in my private life or public, I do it. I'm not saying this is the reason for to say less I'm just telling you yeah. once, okay, look at it. They say they ask me questions. What can you pick? What are you gleaning? Mm. Who are you? What do you do? Mm. Maybe God saw these things oh mm. but these are some of the things I saw. Number two, I am a very loyal person. Mm. If I am in your life, I'm in your life. And I always say bye bye. I will not be laughing. And then when I get behind you, I can't, I can't. I know God's sight. He looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. Whether it's my husband though, or if I won't be in your life, you will just know. I don't know how to hide my feelings. I don't know whether it's immature to you, but <laughs> if you offend me now, once you arrive, you will know. Maybe your life in contention. Like, well, Peter Matthew, so once I say it like this, it's finished. That's me. Then number three, I don't joke with destiny. So I don't have too many friends. My mother in law taught me that one. I'm too focused. I don't have too many friends because I noticed that envy, uh, jealousy, you have to explain. Uh, so, I know where I'm going. I know what I want. Mm. I don't want a common anointing. I want my mates to be scarce. I want, I want to be one of the, one of the best five thousand wives in the world, if it is measurable. I want to be a great parent. I want, you know, I want God to be proud of me. I want my generation. I told my children when I'm gone, and it's time to write anything on my tombstone. Don't write any title. Just write from Ken Felix Adejo. 1963 to 2063, 100 years. She honored God and blessed humanity. That's all. So, I don't have friends. I'm just. My husband is my friend. He's my think tank. He's my collaborator. He's my clarifier. I just ask him. And it is okay. This is what I want to do. There's a pain. I have acquaintances, I have people who I learn from and all that. Else. Then I don't joke with my marriage. My family life is very, very special to me. I believe that you should succeed first at home. You have no right to want people to listen to you if it's not working at home. Let me spend five minutes with your children. Let me hear them. Let me listen to your spouse. Because anybody can be good outside. Anybody, any preacher can be fantastic. Anybody can preach. But let's, people that have, Close. they are in proximity, you know, let's, let's hear them. Let's, let, what do they feel about you? And not anymore, let me go. I know that nobody's perfect. I invest into my marriage, a great time for my husband and children. Then I, I reach out to the poor a lot. The elderly, I honor the aged a lot. Mm. I sponsor children in school. I don't even know how many now. Wow. I've just received messages when I was asking if you were the one that paid my school. Ah, I went to a bad door for a meeting. As we were just getting, I was getting out of the car 
on your mind. The police people were saying, no, no, no. I said, please let him talk now. They said, come, come, where are you, please? I said, I just want to thank you. I just finished. They put sent me to a bottle. I've been looking forward to thank you. You paid my school bill. I said, where, where? I said, they reminded me, oh, I don't deal. That's what happened. They said, this camera man was there that day. So, so, you know, because I believe that I didn't have a great background, mm. which is a wizard's death with my parents, so we became poor. <laughs> I wasn't born poor, but we became poor. Wow. My brother was sick for six years, so wow. we went everywhere, we sold everything. We were eating from our palms, you know. Wow. And when my father sold everything, my brother died. So we became poor. So I know what it's supposed to be. I was a head girl in my secondary school. Two weeks sometimes I'm not able to go to school because of nine pounds. So I know what it means not to have. So I'm passionate about that. Passionate. I'm passionate about widows. I have thousands of them. That God helps us to bless. I have many. These are the things I do. Then I pay attention to details. I pay attention. My husband has taught me that we should plan to last. So some things by God's grace in place. We don't eat with dead fingers. We don't grab. We don't. The water we would drink, it will not pass out. Is it not to wear clothes? Mm. And God has been faithful. I will do my thing in one mm. So these are the little, little things God taught me early to put in place. One of people don't work in pride and then People are seeing God didn't create them. Mm. I study a lot. I don't just read Christian books. I read books. I read books. Different books. I glean. I take what I need. Mm. Because it's not only Christians that sold my clothes. <laughs> it's not only Christians that wash my hair at the yeah. salon. So I cannot say it's just Bible. I read my Bible. The Bible is with me everywhere. Because we have read my Bible over and over and over, and it covers cover. I got money here 42 years ago, so I must, yeah. if I don't read the Bible, something is wrong with me. I'm also an author, so I read books, I listen to people. People that don't even know that I listen to them. I listen to you. You may not know. I listen, I read. Okay, so maybe if you put these things together, you know. Okay, mommy, let's, let's look at it this way. There are some women. Very few women of God that have been given the privilege to be voices to the people. It is very, very humbling. And I give thanks to the ancient of this. Truly, the race is not to the sweet. The battle is not to the strong. John 3 27, the man can receive love. It's been given to him from above. So I'm grateful. And God knows that I'm grateful. I am so grateful. Eternally. It's very challenging. I've been battered. <laughs> criticized. It's social, it's social media. Oh my God. <laughs> You're looking for one woman that has been criticized. Woo, present. I'm here. And that's quite interesting. You know, I have a coach. Wow. So I remember one day my coach said to me, you should be excited. Don't you see you are one woman that they are talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite challenging. I'm grateful to God. His mm -hmm. grace has been there. Mm -hmm. It's part of the package. Mm -hmm. It really is. And there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. you can do about it. Um, if God has put you in that place, there is grace. Is sufficient. But mommy, before we even get to talking about that, I want you to talk about how how the transition into that space. How you how God transited me into that space. There was somebody when you learned the room. I was just doing my thing. I was just faithful, just doing, you know, what I was doing. And then God began to put me on the scale, mm. and uh, from a village citizen, he made me a global citizen. Mm. Invitations here and there, and all that. Then, 
God used Pastor Matthew Ashimodobo to put me on KICC TV because I went to preach there, he put my message there. I know that's the yeah. Uh -huh. So many people that's saw it. And then some of my messages on YouTube, many people saw it. Then my husband will give me the privilege, which is the big one, to speak uh, during our conventions. His friends would invite me and all that. So one person saw me, another one saw me. And before you realize it, you think, God, this is becoming big. And uh, the devil was just mesmerized. The devil was just was just mad. That and that's just I like this to even make a statement that God has not forgotten women. Mm. Even though it's a male dominated force, but at least God dominated women. Even if he's going to be criticized, at least I'm a woman. I'm representing women, and yeah. I'm having a swell time. I'm living my life. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't get you know, it. You know, sometimes you will see people who probably may not be able to even uh, come near you in, in the natural world, and then they make their very interesting comments on social media. How do you handle different people? Many times you don't realize that critics are just trying to tell you that. You are the example of what they wished to be. And there's no way they just they just they're just angry. They're just angry. Uh, I was listening to TD James, one of the men I revere so much in our generation. He said, I've never seen a gossiper that is rich. <laughs> they always broke. Rich people don't have time to be gossiping about people and you know and all that. So Come to think of it, criticism, yes, because you're a human. Sometimes you feel, and then you notice some, some of these things are even lies. Never took anybody's money to anywhere. Any money I raised remained in the church. I never asked for 1%, one percent, one dollar. I was going to go into that area mm -hmm. because, again, how do you feel being misrepresented? For example, someone say, Ah, she said, T. Oh, uh, liar, she just looking for how to um, uh, scheme the people and all that. And then you look at yourself and you're wondering, this is different from my intentions. How do you, how do you put to cope with that? It's normal. Look at the people that are talking. Mm. Mm. It helps me a lot when I look at the person that is talking. Is it because that is true? Yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. Let, mm. some, let everybody come out and say, Oh, she came to a church, she raised an offering and she took it away. Mm. Or she asked us how much, or she she asked for a percentage, or she took out of it. Mm. Then we can start the discussion. But it never <laughs> happened. So I'm not perturbed, I'm not bothered. No. And there's nothing wrong in raising seeds from people. There's nothing wrong. I give too. It's scriptural. Well, well, I thought people. People expect you to have backed out in this thing. I feel, yeah, like, I feel like you are really wrong. I'm just starting my yeah. life. <laughs> I am just starting my life. Wow. So it's you really do not feel that you are wrong in what they accuse you of? Wrong in telling people to sow into the church and then the money is used in the church, help the poor, build the church and all that. Did I take it home? Did I take out of it? No, I didn't. So. You must feel really confident in your, in your calling. I feel very good, and I'll do it again and again. <laughs> when people are in that place, for me, you are not just called to the body of Christ, you also seem to have a voice in the social space among high flyers in the politics, women in the social. How did you do it? You are not in politics. How did you do it? When God calls you, He graces you. I'm just living my life. Just living my life. And God is causing my life to attract them. And since I don't beg them for me, there's no way they will not respond to me. I don't go to government houses to my kid. I don't sow the seed for my There's no way. I don't drag the name of the Lord in the mud. So, I look for their welfare. Their benefits, pray with them, pray for them, and bless them. Mm. And God gives me the privilege to speak into their lives. Definitely, they will have looked into my life, they will have said there must be something. 
you know? And it's the Lord Jesus. Okay, Mommy, as we round up, what's your advice for pastors' wives? Uh, who are Jews' wives, or general pastors' wives, from raising children? Because as we have talked about now, we've had you say it several, you know, families, number one, your families. <coughs> Excuse me, can you let us into how, I mean, can you give advice to pastors' wives, Jews' wives? Number one, please spend time with your children. When they are young and even when they are old, create time for them. You may not have quantity time, but you must spend quality time with them. Number two, know your child. And don't ever compare your children. Each child is unique. Know your child. Number three, befriend your children. Befriend them. Everything is not beaten. Listen to them. Children have feelings too. Listen to them. They will make mistakes. The fact that they are pastors' children does not mean that they are perfect. They will go through infancy, through adulthood, through the 10 years, young adulthood, and all that. So please listen to their feelings. Let them be friendly and be close enough to you to tell you how they feel. Pray for them. Pray for your children. Pray for them by name. Feel the blood of Jesus upon them. Use prayer to navigate their lives, to hand them over to the Lord. And also train your children. Train them. Don't let our culture fade. Our children prostrate to greet us before they come us. And we have begun with our grandchildren too. So, you know, train your children. Give them financial values. Tell them you can't have everything you want in life. That's a great life is made. Teach them financial. Teach them not to spend every money they have. Teach them the, the, the power of hard work. Teach your children that it's not everything that you see that you must own. Give them spiritual values. God does not have grandchildren. So let your children have personal relationships with the Lord. Give them a Bible. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to fast. Teach them how to go to church. Teach them how to be involved, how to serve. Give your children societal values. How to respect the policeman. How to respect elders. How to genuflex. How, you know, teach them table manners, you know, social values. How to do this, how to do that. Please, no Sunday school teacher can give this to your children the way you will do it. Nobody, no school teacher can give that to your children. Don't be so lost in winning the world and doing ministry and then you leave these children. These children, this is your future. This is your future. And the generation of your children will either bless you or curse you, depending on what you send to them. They are your arrows. Please be involved in your children's life in spite of ministry. Travel with them. Make them your PA if possible. You know what I mean? Quote and unquote, when you go to PA, let them sit down. Let them see that God didn't steal their parents. Let them be exposed to the world. Let them meet people. Let them know that, oh, daddy didn't just abandon us to go somewhere and be playing. He's actually working. He's blessing people. Teach them. Have one on one. As a man, put your children in the car, drive them out without your wife. Tell them your life history. Let them sit down. Buy something, Mr. Please, or whatever. Sit down. Tell them. Let them ask you questions. Please, many times we don't have time for these children, and so they turn out badly. May God help us. Amen. Mommy, lastly, I want you to pray for pastors, pastors' wife, pastors' wife particularly, who will be here. Some of them will desire the kind of grace that others give. I want to pray a prayer of impartation because I know some their faith will rise up. And I, as you are watching us, we can actually. Uh, stretch your feet towards this direction. Believing God that as God uses that to throw something will touch you, there's no distance of the spirit. Okay. I want you to please be encouraged. God is a rewarder. He doesn't forget. It doesn't matter what anybody feels about. The day is come. Precious Father, thank you. Thank you so much. You made my life what it is to be because of your mercy and grace. And I'm so grateful. I pray for everyone watching this broadcast that 
you will grant their heart desires. Mm -hmm. They will be established in your purpose for their lives. Mm -hmm. I frustrate the token of the enemy concerning each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. We start to manage their lives and ministry. Lord, please give unto them in Jesus' name. Guide them, lead them, list them, provide for them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. let this year be an exciting one for them. Do them good, my Father. They are the God of Israel. And you see when no man sees. You know what no man knows. Father, please hear this prayer and cause your grace to be multiplied to them. Mm -hmm. Surprise them. Surpass their expectations in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And thank you because I know you are faithful yes. and you are hard. Cause their ministries to skyrocket mm -hmm. and to go to the wings of the earth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me thank you for this opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you for watching.